Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose A and B are positive integers. Then A times B is equal to the greatest common divisor of A and B times the least common multiple of A and B. Now, let's first remind ourselves the definition of greatest common divisor and least common multiple. The greatest common divisor of A and B is the smallest integer, G, such that G is a divisor of both A and B. In fact, the greatest common divisor of A and B is going to be positive. Okay, so what about least common multiple? Well, the least common multiple of A and B, which we will call M, is the smallest positive integer, which has the property that A and B are both divisors of M. Okay, now, in proving this theorem, we're going to use two facts regarding greatest common divisor. Here's the first fact. The greatest common divisor of A and B is the smallest positive integer of the form AS plus BT, where S and T are integers. And a fact which follows from this is the following. The greatest common divisor of A and B is equal to 1 if and only if there exist integers S and T such that AS plus BT is equal to 1. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, we are already given positive integers a and b. The whole goal is to prove this equation is true. Well, we're going to denote the greatest common divisor of a and b by g, and the least common multiple of a and b by n. So the whole goal is essentially to prove that a times b is equal to g times n. Now, to start, we know from our first fact that G is the smallest positive integer of the form AS plus BT. So, we know that there are integers S and T such that G is equal to AS plus BT. And G is the smallest positive integer of this form. And next, since m is the least common multiple of a and b, we know that a is a divisor of m and b is a divisor of m. What does it mean for a to be a divisor of m? It means that there is some integer p such that m is equal to a times p. What does it mean for b to be a divisor of m? It means that there is some integer q such that m is equal to b times q. In fact, P and Q must be positive integers because M and A are positive, M and B are positive. And now, let's multiply M on both sides of this equation. If we do that, on the left-hand side we get GM, on the right-hand side we're going to distribute the M across and we're going to get MAS plus MBT. Now, let's take this M and replace it with BQ, and let's take this M and replace it with AP. And now, let's factor out AB from both terms. So now, we see that GM is equal to AB times an integer. Therefore, AB is a divisor of GM. And remember, gm is a positive integer, so every divisor of gm must be less than or equal to gm. Therefore, ab is less than or equal to gm. Okay, now let's show that the greatest common divisor of p and q is equal to 1. But why do we expect that to happen? Well, because we are expecting ab to equal gm which means we should expect gm to be equal ab times 1, right? And the only possible integer this could be is 1, if we expect ab to equal gm, right? And if this guy is equal to 1, 
Well then, fact number two tells us that the greatest common divisor, p and q, is equal to one. So, let's show that the greatest common divisor, p and q, is equal to one, because we now expect that to be true. To show that, let's denote d to be the greatest common divisor, p and q. Well, by definition of greatest common divisor, we know for one, this means that d is a divisor of p and d is a divisor of q. So, since d is a divisor of p, this means that there is some integer x such that p is equal to x times d. Similarly, since d divides q, there is some integer y such that q is equal to y times d. In fact, x and y must be positive because p and d are positive, q and d are positive. But next, notice, if we compute axd, well, we know that xd is equal to p, ap is equal to m, m is equal to bq, and q is equal to yd. So axd is equal to byd, which means if we divide d on both sides of this equation, we have that ax is equal to by. But now notice, by is a multiple of b, but also by is a multiple of a, because by is equal to a multiple of a. Therefore, by is a common multiple of a and b for sure, but since m is the smallest common multiple of a and b, we must have that m is less than or equal to by. And then let's remember m is equal to axd. So axd is less than or equal to ax. So if we take that inequality and divide ax on both sides, we get that d is less than or equal to 1. So the greatest common divisor of p and q is less than or equal to 1. But we know that the greatest common divisor is a positive integer. So the greatest common divisor of p and q so, d is less than or equal to 1. So, the greatest common divisor of p and q is less than or equal to 1. But let's remind ourselves, the greatest common divisor is a positive integer. So, greatest common divisor of p and q must be greater than or equal to 1. So, it is both less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 1, which implies it must be equal to 1. So the greatest common divisor of p and q is equal to 1, which is what we expected to be true from before. But what can we do with this fact? Well, we can apply fact number 2. Since the greatest common divisor of p and q is equal to 1, we know that there are integers s and t such that ps plus qt is equal to 1. But we already have integers s and t in our proof, so instead I'm going to call those integers u and v. So there are integers u and v, such that pu plus qv is equal to 1. And now, let's take this equation and multiply ab on both sides. If we do that, we're going to get ab equals ab times all of this. So multiplying ab on the left-hand side, we're distributing it across. So we get this. But then notice, AP is equal to M, BQ is equal to M. So let's just factor out the N. So this is what we get. But you know what? I'm actually going to swap the order of BU and AV. What can we do from here? Well, let's notice that AV plus BU must be a positive integer. The reason why is because we have that a positive integer is equal to a positive integer times an integer. Well, the only way that's possible is that this guy must be a positive integer. So, AV plus BU is a positive integer, but from before we know that G is the smallest positive integer of this form. So, G must be less than or equal to AV plus BU. And then, if we multiply the positive number m on both sides of this inequality, we get this. So we can be sure that this guy is greater than or equal to gm. 
So AB is greater than or equal to GM. So we have that AB is less than or equal to GM and AB is greater than or equal to GM. These two inequalities imply that AB must be equal to GM. And G times M is precisely the greatest common divisor of A and B times the least common multiple of A and B. And so we have proven precisely what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.